September, the worst month for Bitcoin is a general view, at least from what I see across pretty much all social medias in this market. However, and when we go into the data and when we really dissect things a little bit further, it actually is revealed that uh, there is something perhaps much more important to be aware of with September that is uh, not included in this sort of analysis that I keep on seeing, pl you know, plastered across the interwebs that September bad. September is always down. Indeed, a lot of the time it is down, but there's a very specific time that September is down and a very specific time that it typically actually does rebound and lead towards, you know, the greater move, if you will. Um, that'll be the focus of today's video, obviously. Of course, we got the monthly closure coming up later tonight. And other than that, I got my face back on this video, so I'm very excited about that. <laughs> Massive thank you to Nimbo for troubleshooting my uh, my technology errors here. Anyways, let's go into the actual data right here. I want to give a big shout out to my assistant quant, Henry Weinecker, for actually turning me on to some of these ideas. We actually uh, spoke about this significantly in the last year's video uh, for September, and I want to expand upon this a little bit more this year um, with a few more data points. So as you can see on the board, all of these uh, vertical bars correlate with past Septembers in Bitcoin's history. And traditionally speaking, yes, September has actually been you know generally a downside month for Bitcoin. If we go ahead and backtest all of September's from the monthly open to the monthly close, you can see that five out of 14 September's have closed positive which is, uh, you know, not optimal <laughs> about, it, you know, low 30% um, hit rate. Now, the average return just for the whole month of September on the positive side for those positive gaining months has been uh, just over 7%. Hey, what the fuck? Who else? Oh, <laughs> I can see my own cursor here. Um, and, uh, and and the average return for the negative closing September months has been just under 13%. Now, I'm going to take these numbers at face value here, but we're going to go into much detail, much more detail in a moment. And we can see that, uh, you know, generally have a range. So let's see what that would look like. Um, assuming that Bitcoin closes somewhere around here. Again, it's a long day left to go, although Saturday typically is uh, not a volatile day. So perhaps, um, you know, perhaps things do close somewhere right around here. And if Bitcoin were to shave off almost 14% to the downside, it would put Bitcoin actually back down around very low $50,000, about 51,000 bucks to be exact, into the upside if Bitcoin were to gain 7% or somewhere around 7%, it would put it back around about 63,300-ish regions, some, something like that. So that is just the data uh, in its raw format at face value. So I do want to, you know, give that its due diligence, of course, because that, you know, this is correct. And what you typically see people continuing to post on these social medias, it is factually correct. But when you actually dig into things, um, you know, it gets a, a few other things get revealed. So first, I actually want to go over um, just past September's in the sense that September has almost always been, or in fact, it has pretty much always been a continuation of the dominant trend, meaning that whatever the dominant trend was prior to September, generally it was continuation point. So uh, for example, this last one that we saw in 2023, you can see Bitcoin was up, 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 comes down a little bit. Yes, it, but it set in a higher low and continues the trend more importantly, in, in this case, in October. Um, back on over here in 2022, you see the same thing, but to the downside. The, uh, the dominant trend was obviously to the downside the whole way through, lower lows, lower highs. And September was just, uh, you know, it was very, it was a very low volatile month, actually, um, which actually is one of the more lower volatility months, which is rather interesting, or at least in my opinion, it is. Uh, but it did continue that, you know, the trend was your friend in that case to the downside. What do we have in 20, uh, in 2021? Well, what do you know? Dominant trend is CEO. Upside. Yes, Bitcoin had just came down and, uh, and and scared the shit out of everyone. Yes, but this was a higher low, to be fair, and trend did continue, and Bitcoin did make new highs from that September. And then what do you know? In 2020, same thing. Obviously, trend was to the upside right here. Bitcoin did have a negative close in September, but did continue the upside um, throughout that year. Uh, in this case right here, for the 2019 saga, you can see that Bitcoin did pop up, but we had not seen a reversal just yet. Of, co of course, a reversal requires both a higher high and a higher low from the prior dominant trend. And in this case, we just saw, you know, slightly a higher high right here. So 
if the if the prior trend had not been officially reversed, well, we should expect downside. And you did get more debt, or we Bitcoin Bitcoin had more downside, um, you know, coming into the Rona dump actually in 2020. Same thing over here again, downside, boom, continuation. Same thing over here, upside continuation, upside continuation. This one was a reversal, so this one would be the outlier. But again, continuation right here in 2014, continuation right here in 2013 and 2012 and 2011 um, to the downside. This one actually, uh, as well, you could argue, um, was a bit of a reversal there as well. I mean, the reversal kind of happened a little beforehand, but we obviously have the the uh, the benefit of hindsight in that case. Um, so that would be a little bit of uh, that 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 would actually kind of go against what I'm saying. Anyways. That is that. Now let's get more granular with this. So one of the big focuses on this channel has been, and you know, probably will always be quad witching dates. We only get four of those per year. It's a major expiration for many different things. And typically you see price action kind of predicated um, upon that date with major pivot points. And September is, well, is is, is going to be one of those uh, around September. Let me just uh, find the exact date here. Damn it. Where's my, oh, where's my calendar, man? <laughs> I have this new computer. There we go. Found, found my damn calendar. Um, it'll be the third Friday. So one, two, three. So it'd actually be the 20th. The 20th of September um, is going to be the quad witching date, meaning that we kind of expect uh, Bitcoin to be, well, likely to the downside before then. And then if Bitcoin is going to reverse, probably around that date. Now, what I've done here, <clears throat> what I've done here is I have measured this basically the second half of September. So um, I'm looking at about the 16th of September, just kind of standardized things uh, throughout Bitcoin's history. And if we actually look from the midpoint of September to the end of September, and we did this analysis last year, by the way, as well, um, you actually will find something significantly different within the data. Eight out of 13 Septembers were positive, actually, uh, for that second half. And for the, which, which would actually give it about a 61.5% uh, strike rate for closing positively. And what's interesting about that is that the average win percentage, meaning like the average return for those winning months was uh, just over 5%. The average loss for the second half was just over or just around about seven and a quarter. Um, so I did think that that, uh, that that was rather interesting, meaning that if Bitcoin can kind of survive until that last portion of September, you know, that might provide the impetus for a little bit of hopium here. Uh, this, this is obviously uh, devoid of prior analyses that, 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 uh, that, that we've been doing on September, or, um, or at least on the monthly closures, which we'll get to maybe a little bit later in this video. Of course, there are important things there as well. But anyways, we can take these numbers here too. Uh, they're probably going to be too relevant right now, because obviously we haven't even started September, let alone got to the midpoint of September. But I do think that that is rather enlightening to see that um, September, while it is typically a negative month, the negative gains are almost always had in that first half, actually. And in fact, I've actually gone through over here with my assistant quant and and, and, uh, and I've added a few things as well. Um, but what I've done here or what we've done here is we've gone over the day of September that did put in the low of the month and then documented um, the day and the actual like uh, name of the day, so like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and then also did it break that low in October. <clears throat> and, uh, and as you can see right here, well, we've taken all of these, and the average September low occurred about in the first two weeks, uh, you know, the first 14 to 15 days. Very interesting, or at least I thought it was very, very interesting. By the way, last September was uh, was bottoming out on the 11th. And, um, and while there typically isn't a lower low in October, it, it, it does occur in some cases, certainly. Um, but in those cases, it was continuation of that prior trend, which again, was, was just basically a, another opportunity. Um, in fact, uh, 
Yeah, about about fifty four uh, about fifty four percent of the time, the low of oct uh, uh, sorry of of September was not broken in October, and forty six percent we did see it actually broken um, in October, and just the you know the most common day of the week to see I suppose the drops here were actually weekends, which was rather interesting to me. Both Saturday and Sunday, um, kind of you know creating the bulk of that uh, you know five between them. Um, so I just thought that that was rather interesting as well that, uh, you know, well, typically you don't see too much price action over weekends, but in September, you know, the low of the month was actually more often than not put on the weekends. Um, anyways, that is that. So I just wanted to provide a little bit more insight um, into the statistics of September because I do continue to see, you know, that same sort of analysis, which it, again is true. It's just needs to be put into context of things because I do believe that September itself is is less important than that quad witching date. The quad witching date, again, is where you see a lot of markets have major turning points, major pivot points, just because you have significant expirations. This is an event that only happens four times a year, and this can be uh, the last, well, is, it, is this the last time of the year? Yeah. Well, uh, yes, no, there's one in December. Kind of, because it's the last one of the year, I suppose. Yeah, so you got that as well. Anyways, um, <clears throat> going on, you know, what can we sort of conclude from this data, or what would I conclude from this data? Very similar to what we said last year. Look, um, first couple weeks, first two to three weeks of September, I would be expecting Bitcoin to try some downside if it is going to be trying some downside. But I would also say that if Bitcoin especially fails to break to new lows or fails to do anything super significant within that time, you should expect the back half of September to likely be green, specifically from that quad witching date, which is going to be September 20 to the end of September. And then you should expect continuation of whatever the former trend was in October, more or less. Now, that's that analysis. I want to go from there and bring you over here just to the most simplistic um, version of this analysis for September, just the general trend of Bitcoin uh, that we've been going over. Again, it's not perfect, but it is going to get you in the right direction almost every time, almost every time th this has been correct. And it is just looking at the monthly time frame with that red moving average, which is a five exponential moving average. And basically, whenever Bitcoin's closing above it, you should generally be uh, geared towards upside. And whenever Bitcoin starts to close below it, well, that is usually the marker of the end of that cycle and getting ready for some pretty significant downside, um, at least. So, in this case, uh, we can see that the red five is currently at 61,000 and a few bucks there. Um, again, it's a long day left to go, but if Bitcoin does fail to, or sorry, yes, it, it uh, sorry, I just got confused there. It is 61,100. I was just highlighting a different uh, bar for a moment. I'm like, what the fuck just changed? But it didn't. It didn't change. It's still the same. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Did I just get that wrong by like a thousand bucks? No, it is correct. Okay, so about 61,000 bucks, a little bit above 61,000 bucks. Of course, there are 16 hours, 13 minutes, and 20 seconds left in this trading day to go. It's a long time. Saturday typically a very low volatility day, so I, you know, I, <laughs> I think that this pro this one is probably more likely to close below. But of course, we'll see at the end of the day here. And of course, we did see that CME closed the monthly for September yesterday on Friday's closure, and that obviously was well below that sixty one thousand dollar number. In fact, this one closing at a price of fifty eight thousand nine eighty. So that is going to be about two thousand bucks below sixty one. And yeah, that can has not been met on CME. Of course, I'd like to see spot price action, you know, follow through with that and, and essentially agree with that data, um, which will be tonight. And uh, and at that point, I mean, I guess I, I, I'm going to be start to see more bearish things and bullish things, actually, um, for just the macro here, for the macro. I'm not talking about like, you know, on a day to day basis, you know, the, these sort of things. And I think that can be a, a bit of a point of contention with a lot of my analysis is like just understanding the actual time frame that we're talking about. Because um, we're talking about, you know, a monthly time frame in this case, which is significant for Bitcoin. Um, but yeah. It does look as of right now that things probably do close below, but we'll see tomorrow for sure. Moving on from there, just looking at the daily um, again, differentiating between t uh, time frames here. You can you can tell that I get a lot of comments about this where I'm just like, the fuck, man! <laughs> like, understand the time frame makes the analysis, and different time frames are going to be different analyses. It's crazy, crazy idea. Yes, the one minute time frame will have a different analysis than a daily. What do you know? Anyways, um, yes. So, uh, looking at the daily right here, uh, Bitcoin still caught in this lower block between. 
between about 60,500 versus the low at 57,700. Uh, we saw yet again Bitcoin play out pretty much the same range yesterday based upon the average returns for our price statistics. Um, I actually didn't bring it up for uh, bring it up today, but we've seen this pretty much all week. Um, and Bitcoin closing pretty much as a doji dildo yet again. So <clears throat> don't have too much to be making out of that. Of course, the upside 60,600 is going to be the, you know, the most uh, uh, relevant short-term area of interest if you are looking for any sort of a early indication of an upside breakout. And other than that, not really many, not really beginning, not really going to be getting too much um, information on or from this uh, as of this moment that we don't already know. Moving on from there, and the last thing here as I wrap up this video, you know, again, um, just uh, what's the word I'm looking for? J just, just as like a, a foolproof, idiot-proof way of kind of looking at this um, and not kind of jumping the gun here. Look, as long as Bitcoin on the 12 hour or daily time frame for that matter, which is pretty much one and the same here, uh, as long as Bitcoin is below the red five exponential human average, I wouldn't be entertaining the possibility of any sort of upside. However, if Bitcoin is going to reclaim uh, that $61,000 region tonight, you're very likely to see first this next 12 hour period close above the five exponential, which is at 59,500. And then perhaps that could be an early green light that Bitcoin actually will try um, for that move coming into the end of the month here and salvage things, at least in the way that I think a lot of people want to look at it. So um, as long as Bitcoin's below, I mean, still more downside angled. And again, pending tonight's closure, there actually will start to be uh, perhaps more bearish things on the board than bullish things. And so I'm going to have to, you know, uh, you're going to start to see me change, uh, change around in a few ways. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see exactly what happens, though. It really all depends on where things open up tomorrow as well. For the accumulation distribution indicator, as my voice breaks in the background I drank too much damn coffee this morning and uh and yeah anyways i should also let you know for the people who have made it this far into this video we're going to be having a sale starting tomorrow actually but you can get it early today if you so desire with the code b day in all capitals because it's actually maybe my b day <laughs> or at least very very soon um so you can use that code on any one of the programs or services over here for the crown quant automation we're going to allow you we're going to afford you we're going to afford you um 80 off of the first month's uh, uh purchase so um if you do want to try out that service you can get it for an extremely low dollar amount i believe it's about 30 bucks with that discount and everything else will be 20 percent off and again you can use that code b day right here and tomorrow's video will be uh, quite big. I, I typically want to do the big three videos on Sundays, but I think in this particular instance, because we will have a new monthly, it's going to be more relevant to be looking at Bitcoin um, and going through, you know, go, going through all of the monthly operations that we typically do. So, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for right now. As always, I want to wish you the best of the best. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully next time.